what it was just one month ago. Residents are still getting vaccinated, but at a slow pace. We need to move the needle faster. 61.59% of Orange County residents ages 12 and above have had at least one shot of the vaccine. Since the start of the pandemic, there have been 160,222 positive cases in Orange County reported and 1,383 deaths. When we started, I don't know that any of us really anticipated that nearly 1,400 people of our 1.4 million people in Orange County would die of this virus. At Barnett Park, Orange County Health Services workers are experiencing a large influx of residents who want to be tested for COVID-19. This has caused the free drive-through testing site to close in the early afternoon almost every day last week. We are exploring the feasibility of opening a second site due to the overwhelming demand. As the summer travel season continues, we want to urge residents to arrive early to the testing site to ensure they can be accommodated before the site closes. Additionally, it is important to know that the greater demand in testing may create longer wait times. But I want to also point out that there are other places to get free COVID tests within our community. You can avail yourselves of the opportunity at Walgreens. Uh, they offer free tests for individuals three years of age and older. CVS also offers free tests to those with and without health insurance coverage. Check with your local Walgreens or CVS to see if appointments or other requirements are necessary. Bottom line is that the Delta variant cases are on the rise and residents must do everything possible to protect themselves and their loved ones, which includes getting vaccinated and following CDC health and safety guidelines. On the screen behind me, you should see a graphic regarding the and Foster Road. Tomorrow morning, the mobile vaccine trailer will be at Goodwill on Orange Blossom Trail. In the afternoon, shots will be available at West Oaks Mall by the Orange County Tax Collector's Office. Lake Eola will be the location of the trail on Wednesday morning, followed by the tax collector's Lee Vista office on Wooden Pine Drive on Wednesday afternoon. For those of you who live in the Lee Road area, the trailer will be at the in-town suites extended stay on Thursday between hours of 1.30 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. If you know someone who is behind on rent because of the pandemic, Orange County's Emergency Rental Assistance Program may be of help to them. The program can provide up to 12 months of past due rent and one month of future rent up to $20,000. Residents can check their address and review required documents by visiting our website at ocfl.net slash rental assistance. As a reminder, the program will host an upcoming virtual application training session for nonprofit and community agencies this Wednesday, July 28th, 2021, between the hours of 2 and 3.30 p.m. The training will provide a step-by-step -step process of how clients can submit an application. It is the county's hope that the organizations that participate in this training will act as advocates for the program, educating their clients on this important rental payment assistance. Interested organizations can visit ocfl.net slash rental assistance to register. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Herrera from Advent Health at this time.
Good morning. First of all, I want to say thank you to Mayor Dennis for giving us the opportunity to be here this morning and share with all of you some of the things that we are seeing in our hospitals. My name is Victor Herrera. I'm Chief Medical Officer of Advent Health Orlando. So, unfortunately, we have continued to see a significant increase in the number of hospitalizations across all our hospitals due to COVID-19. We are approaching an all-time high in terms of our inpatient number of COVID-19 cases, which is stretching our capacity. This morning, we announced that our system in our division is moving to level red. As a reminder, our priority is the safety of our patients, our team members, and our ability to continue to provide care for COVID and not COVID patients. In order to do that, when we are in a situation like this one where our capacity is a stretch, we may have to reschedule care that is not urgent. So as a reminder, that is what level red means. We do a systematic review of all procedures that are scheduled for patients, and if there is something that can wait, then we make that decision in collaboration with the doctor taking care of that patient so we can increase our capacity. There are some key things that I want to share with all of you that we are seeing. And it's important, I believe, to communicate uh, to all of you in our community. The first one is that although we are in a very tight capacity situation, we stand ready to meet the demands of our community and all the healthcare needs. We have the appropriate equipment, space, and everything that is needed, even if cases continue to go up, to continue to care for COVID and not COVID-19 patients. So I think it's very important for everybody to understand that. I also wanna share with you that this is clearly what has been described as a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Over 90% of patients that are in the hospital right now with COVID-19 did not get a COVID-19 vaccine. So clearly vaccines work. If somebody gets a COVID-19 vaccine, based on what we've seen, their chances of get, being hospitalized are very low, are probably way less than 1%. The other thing that I want to share is that we have seen during this peak a higher proportion of pregnant women with COVID-19 admitted to the hospital. Some of them are very sick and we currently have pregnant women intubated in our ICUs. This is a reminder uh, to our community and pregnant women to consider the COVID-19 vaccine and to have that conversation with their doctors. We want to encourage pregnant women to think about vaccination. Again, we don't know yet if this is related to the Delta variant, but clearly there is a higher number of pregnant women very sick with COVID-19 right now compared to before. And the last thing that I want to say is at a personal level as an infectious diseases doctor, um, clearly the vaccine is a personal choice but it's, it's, it's hard to see, and it's to some extent frustrating to see people dying in the hospital uh, from a disease that at this point can be pre prevented with the vaccine that we have. And I just wanna close with something that has been now a common thing that we hear from patients that are in the hospital, get very sick and need to go to the ICU, and one that I heard from a patient, uh, which is right before he was about to be intubated, um, I wish I had received the vaccine. Um, so with that, I'll pass it on uh, to Dr. Pino now. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> good, mor good morning. Um, the total number of cases in our county is at 160,839, and 158 of those are, um, are residents. Uh, the total number of deaths is uh, 1,388, 
and the range of those deaths uh, that we are reporting is 27 years old. That was the youngest person to 85. I want people to listen to that 27. Um, the median age is 59. That's the median age is a lot lower than we had experienced in the past. There were six females, seven male. Um, all of them were unvaccinated, uh, as far as we can see in our records. Our condolences, of course, goes to their families and friends. But just to help people understand where we are today, our numbers last week are similar to the first week of January, almost before we started to vaccinate. And that's concerning. Um, actually, we never thought that we would be at this point again. Um, but that was before the Delta variant. Just to give you an idea, yesterday, and Sundays are funny days because the data goes uh, crazy. Uh, so don't read too much into this number. Uh, Sunday were 620 cases. And it's alarming that I say don't read too much into this number because Saturday was 958 cases and Friday was 1,031 cases. On Friday, those 1,000 cases, no one was vaccinated, not a single person. On Saturday, there was 99%, and yesterday reported cases was also over 99% of in unvaccinated individuals. Um, the numbers continue to be greater uh, between 15 to 44 years old, but especially the 35, the 25 to 44 years old should get vaccinated. That's where we have the highest uh, number in our community. Our positivity rate also continue to increase. And again, here is a lot higher because Sundays, the number of people that tend to be tested are more likely to be seeking care because they are not feeling well. All the people that are not feeling that are not feeling that ill will postpone the testing a little bit for a Monday or another day. Uh, so the positive rate for yesterday was 20.05%. And our 14 day average is a 14.39. The day before that, Saturday, our positive rate was 16.4. And the day before that, our positive rate was 15.5. So it's clearly continue to increase, and it's not showing any signs that it will slow down. The month of July so far, and we have a couple of days left, is the lowest death in the last year. Since July is last year, if things continue to be the way they are, our this July 2021 20, will have the lowest death rate. And that's a clear indication of the effectiveness of the vaccine. We continue to follow several outbreaks and some of them are very small, others are a little bit larger, but we are following outbreaks of 100 people, 46 people and so on. And it's important to know that in this environment, we have also moved to be very selective and prioritize who we track and who we do trace investigation and isolation and quarantine as the numbers are larger than we can handle in a 24 hour period. Uh, with that, I will pass it to Mayor Demins and answer any questions that you may have. Okay, let me also acknowledge uh, Commissioners uh, Nicole Wilson and Commissioner uh, Gomez Cordero who have joined us uh, as we usually do. If there are any questions in Spanish, we have the ability to do translation today. Um, we have Ilya Torres who can assist with that. And Dr. Pino and Dr. Herrera are both fluent in Spanish. Um, we also have uh, Mr. Scott Howard here from our local school district. If there are questions specific to the school district, uh, we will ask him to come forward. And with that, I'm going to open it up for any questions at this time. Okay, okay we're gonna move the, uh, the mic to you. 
So they're, they're coming in your direction. Thank you. This question is for Dr. Herrera. Can you confirm that Advent Health switched to red status and clarify what that means? Yes. Um, so yes, as of this morning, we have moved to uh, level red. Um, what that means is, is an internal system that we use to try to postpone, reschedule medical care that is not urgent. The goal of that is to increase capacity so we can care for the increasing number of patients that we are seeing. But yes, that is correct. We are right now. Okay. 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 Um, so I'm being asked to, to repeat that in, in Spanish. Sí, a partir de, de esta mañana, el sistema de salud Advent Health se ha movido tu nivel rojo. La razón de esto es porque continuamos viendo un número acelerado de admisiones relacionadas a COVID-19. El sistema, el nivel rojo, lo que significa es que si algunos pacientes necesitan procedimientos que no son urgentes, se van a posponer para poder crear capacidad para ver a los pacientes que tenemos en el hospital. Okay, I have a couple, so here we go. Um, Dr. Herrera, if you could explain again, you said anecdotally, you, you know of patients who have said, I wish I would have gotten my vaccine. I do feel like that's an important message. Is it just one patient? Can you talk a little bit more about the pregnant women, um, the, the cases that you're seeing there? And then I do have a question for Dr. Pino and Scott. Yes, um, so getting the COVID-19 obviously is a, is a personal choice. Um, and I think that the most important way to think about it is, is this risk versus benefit ratio. And I think that a lot of people that don't get the vaccine, in their minds they are sometimes thinking, well, what is the risk of the vaccine versus the risk of getting COVID? And I think that what we are seeing is that clearly the risk from COVID can be much higher. So if you put yourself in a position of somebody that made that choice of being okay with those odds, and now they are very sick in the hospital, they are about to be intubated, they clearly, them and their families, have thoughts related to maybe the right decision will have been to take the vaccine. And as a healthcare provider, it's, it's very hard to be you know, providing care and at the same time sensing those feelings almost of regret of maybe they didn't make the right choice. Um, related to pregnant women, you know, we are uh, data um, uh, driven. So I, I want to make sure that we um, are accurate in what we report. I, um, I was talking to Dr. Pino where this is something that we're seeing across or in other systems, but definitely in our system, we have now a larger proportion of pregnant women with COVID, all unvaccinated, that are hospitalized, and um, several of them are very sick. Um, so we have concerns, and we were discussing whether this may be related to the Delta variant. We don't know that yet, but we feel really obliged to share this with the community because, again, for those pregnant women that are trying to make that decision, this information may make the difference, and I will encourage them to have this conversation with their doctors. You know, typically we try to limit you all to just one question, but I know because of you know, what we're sharing with you today, you may have more than one question and we want to provide that opportunity. So I believe Dean had a, an additional question for Dr. Pino. So Dr. Pino, if, if you will come forward. Yesterday. Oh, if you are unvaccinated, the chances are higher. Um, as the virus become more prevalent in the community, the chances will continue to increase. Uh, there is a correlation with uh, the amount of virus in the community and the infectiousness of the Delta variant and the number of people that are getting. And this goes you know, exponentially. And it seems like it's going into that trajectory. Um, uh, those chances will increase. Now, people have to understand we are not even at the top of that trajectory yet because we haven't seen the hospitalization numbers. 
although has been increases and significant increases, it will increase more in two weeks. Uh, the numbers that we are seeing today, you will see the hospitalization of those numbers in two weeks. So that's an indication that that trajectory will continue because hospitalization will start to decrease in two or three weeks after cases decrease, and we are not there yet. So we should expect that a number of infections are going to increase, the positive rate will continue to increase, hospitalization will continue to increase, and younger people are getting affected and infected by this and suffering the consequences. We are uh, today announced a 27-year-old who died from COVID-19. Of course, it could be that the person had pre-existing conditions and many other factors, but it's critically important that this younger segment of the population get vaccinated. We still have time to curve this. Dr. Pino, uh, I would like you to ask you a question in Spanish. ¿Qué está haciendo el condado para prevenir esto? Además, ¿qué se puede hacer con las personas que aún no se han vacunado? Um, the question in Spanish was, uh, what is the county doing to prevent what's happening and what can be done with the people who have not been vaccinated? La, la segunda pregunta, primero, es el, lo único que podemos hacer es apelar al sentido de sobrevivencia de estas personas porque es real que esta infección pasa es real que vas a estar en el hospital es real que muchas personas más van a morir si nosotros no incrementamos nuestras vacunas y me preocupan mucho las personas latinas y la gente de color que vivimos en multidirectional homes donde tenemos varias generaciones en una misma casa y los niños cuando vayan a la escuela trayendo la infección a la casa. With regard to the people that are unvaccinated, the answer was that we only can appeal to the sense of self-worth and survival for those individuals. This is a real thing. This could happen to you, and we have the tool to prevent it. Not only that, in the, at the personal level, this could drag our community as back to times of restrictions that we don't want to see. Because if these numbers continue to increase, the government at all levels may not have many, any other choice than to place those restrictions. And that's what we don't want to. La primera pregunta que ha hecho el condado, eh, tenemos las vacunaciones en más de 100 lugares. Estamos ofreciendo pruebas gratis. Tenemos una estructura móvil que está yendo a los barrios a darle vacuna a nuestras personas. Todos los CVS, todos los Walgreens, los tenemos en los Publix y en otros mercados, los tenemos en Walmart. La vacuna está. Lo único que hace falta es tomar la decisión para ponérsela. With regard what else is doing, what else the county is doing, I said the vaccines are everywhere. We have more than 100 locations. All the CVS, all the Walgreens, all the uh, supermarkets, all the Publix, even Walmart. So the vaccine is in our community. Just take that step and take it. And for employers, please give your employees the time to get vaccinated and to get their family vaccinated. A couple of hours today for a vaccine is going to prevent 14 days of isolation and quarantine in the near future. Están llenas y estamos llegando al pico, eh, que ya estamos pasando el pico <coughs> más alto que tuvimos antes. So, eh, por eso no, no, nos movimos a nivel rojo. Solo nos movimos a nivel rojo cuando nuestra capacidad está al máximo. Así es como estamos ahora mismo y como decía el doctor Pino, nuestra preocupación es que de pronto ni siquiera estamos en lo peor de, de esto. Pero también, como dijo el doctor Pino, no es demasiado tarde. Comportamientos en la comunidad y incluyendo las vacunas, todavía pueden hacer una diferencia en esta situación que estamos en este momento. Por eso nos estamos moviendo a rojo. Um, el, eh, and I'm going to translate it to English in, in one minute. Para, eh, la razón de rojo es para crear esa capacidad. Nosotros como sistema de salud en este momento seguimos listos para proveer todas las necesidades de la comunidad. Y, y por eso es que nos estamos moviendo a rojo. 
Uh, so the question had to do what is our current ICU capacity. Uh, so the answer is that we are completely full, but that's the reason that we are moving to red. The, the idea behind red is to create, the red level is to create that extra capacity so we can continue to uh, care for the patients that, that need our services. So right now, even though that we are red, Advent Health stands ready to continue to meet uh, the demands of the community, both for COVID-19 and not COVID-19 patients. And RED is gonna help us do that. I had a question for Dr. Pino. Um, tell us uh, what you can about the recent uh, death of the 27-year-old. Um, was that in the last week or so? And then can you um, tell us, you know, just detail the, the latest uh, death numbers? You mentioned them earlier, but. So I don't have much information yet. Um, it's early in the morning, so uh, the data just came in. And, but we could explore what type of information we can give. Normally, when it's one single case, we avoid to, we try not to give too much information as the person could be identified and it's very painful for the families. But again, I will search for that information. So, uh, how many deaths 13. 13. Last week. Um, we continue to explore the potential for um, the efficacy and the <clears throat> legality of um, instituting any type of mass mandates. In order for us to do that, there's a high bar that we have mentioned to you on a number of occasions uh, that will, will necessitate um, the availability of data from the hospitals and or the Florida Department of Health. Uh, you've heard them share with you some of their census within the hospital system and some of the data. Uh, I will not um, say absolutely we will not do a mandate at this point. Um, as we get additional information, as the mayor of Orange County, as the person that is responsible for our emergency response, I'm going to do everything that I possibly can do to keep our residents safe. And so that has to be um, done through deliber deliberate thought, and we're going to continue to do that in this process. So I was hopeful that we would significantly increase the rate of vaccination within our community, and ultimately we would see the numbers declining. But obviously, in a public health crisis, if these numbers continue to go up, we continue to adversely impact the critical care units within our hospital, we would have to do something. And so this next uh, 24 to 48 hours or so are going to be critical uh, to any decisions that I would make in that regard. Steve Hudak from the Orlando Sentinel. Dr. Herrera. Um, I think there's, if there's any pregnant woman listening in, let me ask you this. What kind of um, risk do they take and what kind of risk do they take for the baby if they get vaccinated? I don't really know any of that. I think that's a, that's a very important question. And that's why I said at the beginning that at the end of the day, this is a risk versus benefit analysis and each person is different. That's why we encourage them to have that discussion with their doctors. I have to tell you, and there was a recent study published just a few days ago, that all the data in terms of vaccine safety um, in pregnancy uh, so far is favorable. So we have more data, yes, in terms of um, um, uh, safety in pregnancy. We have a lot more data than we had at the beginning. And now, unfortunately, we're seeing what could potentially be that they are at higher risk than what we thought when it comes to COVID-19. So I think that the, that risk versus benefit is definitely shifting to the side that there is a lot more risk from not getting vaccinated than any potential risk from the vaccine. Um, again, an individual decision, discuss it with your doctor, but we encourage all of them to think about it and have that conversation. 
Sí, la pregunta eh, tiene que ver con riesgo para mujer embarazada de la vacuna y la respuesta es que obviamente esto es un balance entre riesgos de COVID y riesgos de la vacuna. Ahora tenemos mucha más información que antes. Unos estudios recientes muestran de que la vacuna, hasta por lo que podemos ver, es segura durante el embarazo y queremos uh, decirle a todas las mujeres embarazadas que tengan esta discusión con sus médicos porque todos los casos son diferentes, uh, pero creo que más y más estamos viendo que la balanza se va hacia que hay mucho menos riesgo con la vacuna que con COVID. This question was texted in from Mayor Dummings from Ryan Lynch in the Orlando Business Journal. The question reads, has there been any discussion with large employers on mandating vaccination for employees? Has there been anything discussed or on the table? Um, we've had conversations with different employers uh, around the county. Uh, at this point, it is up to those private businesses to make decisions as it relates to their employees and whether or not they will mandate the wearing of facial coverings, et cetera. We have strongly recommended uh, that in places where people are indoors and they cannot socially distance that they uh, wear facial coverings. Uh, outdoors, a different story, but certainly if you're in crowded spaces, even outdoors where you can't socially distance, Uh, you know, our experts are saying that you should consider wearing a facial covering even in those circumstances because you really cannot discern who's uh, been vaccinated and who has not been vaccinated. So Dr. Pino uh, said that uh, the number of people who, um, who died during the month of July was one of the lowest numbers, but uh, Dr. Pino If we continue to see the current trajectory that we're on, um, what's your uh, pre prediction for the month of August? <laughs> um, I think that probably the month of August will be the first month that we see an increase in the last year. Um, I think so. Okay. So I asked Dr. Pino that question uh, because Individuals are going to have to make some decisions. Businesses are going to have to make some decisions about what they value. Do they value the lives of their employees and their guests? Or do they value profits more? Uh, so they're going to have to make some decisions there about where is that balance? And our job is to provide them with uh, credible information by which to make those decisions. And so we're going to continue to do that at these press events as well as through the other um, social media information and other media information that we will provide to everyone within our community. What we are experiencing here is not unique to uh, Orange County, Orlando, the state of Florida. It's happening all over the country. However, uh, because of the high volume of people who are traveling in to our community, uh, I think it does create some complications for us. Um, so our encouragement is to, we know that the vaccine works. You've heard these physicians, these experts tell you that the vaccine works. Uh, you're better off with it than with, without it. They have told you that wearing of facial coverings uh, is something that works, and they have told you that social distancing in appropriate spaces works as well. They are the experts. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation that gets bantered around our community and across the nation. And for whatever reasons, uh, individuals have been hesitant to get vaccinated. Again, I say to all of those You really don't want to find yourself in an uncomfortable place where you have to be hospitalized or you are the cause of another person having to be hospitalized or you are the cause of a loved one uh, dying because you could have gotten uh, protected and you didn't. So that's where... Uh, we all have this, this responsibility. 
Well, you know, the, you know, the, the state uh, methods of responding to this has not been what uh, I thought that it should be, especially here in recent times. We have to be proactive in responding. We have to be visionaries. Uh, to me, a visionary is someone who anticipates the need for something before it's needed, and they take action in a timely manner. Uh, it appears that our state is not taking action in a timely manner. And that's sad for all of us. So now is a time that we should see some adjustments being made because the virus is quickly spreading. So we you can't do the same things that we've been doing and expect different results. <laughs> What is that? The definition of insanity. Uh, so <laughs> we have to do something different at this point. So thank you all. Uh, the next uh, press conference is going to be this Thursday. Uh, Dr. Williamson, what time are we doing it on Thursday? Uh, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. However, we will continue to keep you informed should other uh, decisions be made. Thank you for joining us.